If you were to end a relationship, how long do you think it would take you to notice that your ex had moved into your loft? What? This is Stalker in my attic. I'm Jay Harang and I talk about soft porn and stalker movies. You should subscribe. This is Ben and let's not mess about, he's an idiot. This is his girlfriend Mel and this is her house. He only lives there because he's her boyfriend and it's clear that Mel wants to bin him off. As Ben is a moron, he's failing to read the situation. He's a handyman so he does all sorts of stuff around the house. Mel's like, Ben you don't have to keep doing this stuff around the house. Well, you said to treat it like a home so I am. And I bet she regrets ever saying that. Mel works with this guy Sam and she prefers him to Ben because Sam's normal and Ben has the mind of a child. Ben is at home today and he's having a go at the crossword. You might think this first clue is easy, but for Ben, even reading the words is a challenge, so let's give him some time. Ben's handyman work includes things like cleaning a vent, changing a bulb in a lamp, and cleaning windows. This is their neighbour Carl. He takes nosy neighbour to new levels. He's an interfering old c- He's like, Ben, can I recommend a company to do those windows? And Ben's like, no, I like doing it myself. Now, this is annoying. Look how many kitchen towels Ben is using. This is just for one window, too. And that stuff is expensive, so it's a false economy. Then again, Ben can't be expected to grasp such a concept. I'm sorry, but this level of waste is just infuriating. Anyway, when Mel gets home from work, she hears laughing in the kitchen. It's Ben and her daughter, Brooke, who's explaining to Ben what all the different emojis mean. I'm so confused. Brooke fucks off, so Mel's like, OK, Ben, I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling this. It's over. Do you get that? I mean, I don't. Actually. She's like, okay, I'll try again. I don't want to be your girlfriend anymore. Uh, okay. No, I'm just, I'm um, having a hard time understanding this. Okay, Ben, last time, move out of my fucking house. It's finally sunk in and he's really not happy. He looks at this picture for ages, which Brooke drew when she was six, but you'd be forgiven for thinking Ben drew it yesterday. So Ben has moved out and he's at work. Somehow, somebody pays him to change batteries in smoke alarms. After work, he calls Mel to let her know that he's all settled in at his new place. Oh yeah, his new place is in her attic, right above her bedroom. Oh my goodness. Sometime later, nosy Carl comes over to Mel and says, Where's Ben? I haven't seen him for ages. Yeah, Ben's no longer living with us, Carl. Really? Well, as far as she knows, he isn't. Carl's like, that's a shame, but don't worry, I'll keep an eye on things for you from now on. While Mel and Brooke are out, Ben walks around the house as if everything's normal. But what's this? Brooke and her boyfriend Dylan have skipped school and have come back to the house. Brooke and Dylan find this hilarious for some reason. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea how he manages to get past them without them noticing, but eventually he distracts them with the smoke alarm so he can creep back into his loft. Nosy Carl lets himself in and he's like, right, what was that noise and why aren't you at school? Brooke's like, yeah, bye, Carl. Carl's told Mel, so Brooke is getting a bollocking and Ben can hear everything from the attic. Next day, something important is happening at Mel's work, which means she needs to go on a date with Sam. Come again? Whatever. Later that night, Ben's playing with a doll's house and drops something. Mel's like, oh, it must be squirrels. Oh. So she leaves a voicemail for Ben and asks if he knows anything about animals getting into the attic. Ben calls back when Mel's on her date with Sam and says he'll come by later and look at the attic. She's like, no, I'm out. Don't worry about it. This makes Ben angry, so he knocks something over. Ooh. You're hard. When Mel gets back from her date, she sees what looks like someone in her bedroom window. Must be the squirrels again. Yes. So the next day, the exterminator has arrived, and this is bad for Ben. Oh, no, it's not. The exterminator looks around for 30 seconds and doesn't bother checking the area where Ben's hiding. The next morning, nosy Carl is hanging around again, and Mel tells him she needs an electrician. Carl isn't busy, as all he's doing is waiting to die, so he's going to sort the problem for her. So while Ben's hanging around the house, Carl walks in, and he's like, What are you doing here, Ben? Ben isn't capable of thinking on his feet, so he only has one option. When Mel gets home from work, she finds Carl's body on the floor and assumes he died trying to fix her electrics. Ben has turned up to see if Mel's okay. Her called me. She's worried about you. Come on, let's go inside. He fixes the lights and tells her to call him immediately next time. Next day at work, Mel suggests that Sam comes over to her house this weekend because Brooke's away on a field trip. So they'll have the house all to themselves. Sam's like, good, it's been ages since I had sex. I mean, yeah, we need to finish this project for work. Within minutes of him arriving at her house, they're upstairs, but looks like Ben is walking around. Did she see that? 
Sam's like, if you don't want to bang, we can just binge watch a series. Much to his disappointment, she agrees. They fall asleep and Ben goes high risk before deleting all the work they did from her laptop. I'm stunned he even knows how to do that. In the morning, Sam makes a coffee with Ben's machine and starts doing a crossword at the table. Sam gets a call from his ex, who's the mother of his children, and Mel gets in a mood because she's an irrational bitch and starts whinging to her friend on the phone, who I can only imagine is another single bitter enabler. As soon as she gets in her car, Ben is downstairs and sees that Sam's been doing the crossword. He's absolutely livid and starts tearing up the paper and smashing stuff. But this is bad timing. Mel has forgotten something, so she's come back inside and Ben hasn't had any time to clean up the mess. Oh no! Mel sees the mess, but it's alright. Ben's found a brilliant hiding place. When the police turn up, they're like, yeah, whatever, love. There's no sign of forced entry and nothing's missing. Then she sees her files have been deleted. When she goes into work and tells Sam about it, he's understandably pissed off. But that's enough to make Mel think she should get back with Ben. So she calls him to arrange to meet. You know, what about, what about your place? At my place. How's he going to get out of this? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, right. So instead of saying no, he's gone to this woman's house who he fixed the smoke alarm for earlier and removed all evidence that she lives there. So Mel comes round and she's like, so what have you been up to? Uh, you know, not much, the usual. Yeah, you know, living in your attic, stalking you, killing your neighbour, just the usual. Then they start reminiscing and they're about to have at it. Mel's like, let's go to the bedroom and Ben thinks, oh shit, I haven't sorted the bedroom. So he makes an excuse and says he has an appointment. They agree to meet at the house later, but Mel finds women's underwear behind the couch. This makes her angry. Angry, so she leaves. Sam has come to the house to apologise for Mel for being angry earlier and then they bang. Ben's not happy about this so he poisons Sam's coffee in the morning. Everything's getting a bit too creepy so Mel tells Brooke she's going to call her friend Erin who's a realtor and put the house up for sale. Ben hears this and he's not happy. He comes to see Mel the next day and he can't hide his anger. Do you know how much I've invested into this house? He starts raging at Mel saying they belong together or whatever but she tells him to fuck off. So Ben goes to see Erin pretending he wants to buy a condo, but actually he's there to kill her. In Ben's head, this will stop the sale. What an idiot! Mel is angry with Ben because of his behaviour earlier, so she goes to see him at what she thinks is his place. But the woman who actually lives there is like, um, this is my house. Who's Ben? Do you mean the maintenance guy? So now Mel's realised that Ben's been living in the attic. When she finds him up there, she's like, Ben, you've crossed the line. <sighs> what was I supposed to do? Yeah, I suppose it was the only real option available. Brooke has come home and Ben has to think on his feet, which we know he's not very good at. What are you doing here? Uh, well... He says they've got back together. She's like, that's nice, where's my mum? She went over to Aaron's. How come my mom's car is still here? Uh... He's acting strangely, so Brooke goes upstairs and calls Mel, but she hears her phone vibrating in the loft. When she goes up there, she sees her mum tied up in Ben's makeshift bedroom. Just as she unties her, Ben comes up. Brooke manages to escape, but Ben grabs Mel and they start fighting. <laughs> so Mel escapes, the police arrive, and the next thing we see is them all happy in their new place. What about the attic? no attic but look who's working on the renovations that's absurd and that's the end of the film so until next time thank you for watching if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe and check out this other video thank you